the first reading for the festival of all saints is from the book of Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John, the seventh chapter. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 10,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where do they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God 
and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the second reading. The third reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the third reading. Blessing, grace, and peace to you, all you saints of God, on this day and every day that the Lord your God reminds you that he is with you forever and ever. Amen. Perhaps it's because of the long teaching from the Roman Catholic Church that we have this misunderstanding about who the saints of God truly are. Now, to be sure, there are many Christian men and women whose example of faithfulness and love during their time in this world is so exemplary that scarcely anyone would not agree that he or she is deserving of the title of saint. Literally a holy one or even divine one. You heard in the psalm for this morning, Psalm 97, the phrase, 
Worship him, all you gods. Lowercase g and plural. Now there is but one God. The Holy Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But the Bible rightly talks about lowercase g, God's plural, when the good book speaks about you, good people. Yes, you are God's in the sense that you are holy ones, divine ones, not by our own doing, but by God's gracious doing in our lives. That's why all of you not only are deserving of the title, but have been crowned with the title of saint by your God. Because the lives of the peoples of God are exemplary. Not because we're perfect, No one of us is. And in fact, those men and women of old who have been honored with the churchly title of saint, the great prophets of the Old Testament, the apostles of the new, men and women whose lives are recorded in the Holy Bible, in the annals of Christian history, And even those who have walked and now walk among us, each and every one of those saints would argue against having the title because, well, that's just what a saint humbly does and would redirect that glory to the God who makes such a wondrous and marvelous declaration about each and every one of you. Your lives are exemplary not because they are perfect as we look upon each other, as we listen to each other's words, which are the only ways by which we are capable of judging one another's lives. But your lives are exemplary in the sight of the only one who matters before God himself. Because what makes a saint is God, first and foremost, and only God. The God who by his grace comes into the lives of ordinary people men and women and children like those of this little flock and makes them extraordinary. You're a saint. You're a holy one. You are a little G God. That's God's word. Because of what he's done for you. No, we don't deserve it. But this is why he sends his son into the world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That we might wash our robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb shed from the altar of the cross of Jesus Christ. that we who believe that the only way to wash our robes, to wash our flesh, 
to wash our souls free from the stain of our sin before God and each other is to dip it in blood. A blood that purifies. A blood that cleanses. And that faith in the blood of Jesus is what makes you a saint. That faith that's created by the Holy Spirit who convinces you that these words are true. Not just that it's true that we are sinners, for we are, but that it's true that we have been declared to be saints and made saints and honored as saints by the sanctifier, God himself. His son has come into the world to live the saintly life, the sanctified life, by the power of God's word and the power of God's Holy Spirit so that there is a righteous life that we might claim. And faith in Jesus makes his holy life yours, you holy one. Believing that Jesus has died for all of your sins, every single last one of them. And that faith in his death is the death of all of your sins. That is the exemplary life of the saint. That's really where it begins for us coming to draw from the well of salvation, the living water of holy baptism. In that act, God first declared you to be a saint, gave you your holy name, sent you on your holy way. And that's a living power upon which we might draw every single day as saints. To look at a font like this. To look at water wherever it can be found. And say once upon a time. God washed and cleansed me. Because he added a word of promise to that water. That made it more than just a washing of the body. But a washing again of the soul. It's why every single time you come into these four walls, you will always hear the declaration of God's grace towards you, his saints. You might not hear the word saint, though you should. If you don't hear it directly, hear it ring out in the echo of All Saints Day this year. Because when you believe the words of Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. He doesn't care how many. He doesn't care how great. But when you come before him as holy saints, to believe that this is where it happens. This is where you wash your robe and make it spotless and pure. That's what happens. It's why the introduction to the reading from Revelation 7 this morning pointed to the reality that this, our worship of God, is. In Revelation 7, we're being given a glimpse of the divine reality behind the veil. But this is what's going on. We are joining a countless throng. We are also among those who are sealed for salvation. 
Because as Revelation 7 first declares, God seals his people for salvation, symbolized in the sealing of the 12 tribes of Israel and all of the inhabitants of those tribes, all of the members of the holy family, with a symbolic number of 144,000, but a real number that can count, be counted by no human being on earth today. That's you. With your invisible palm branch in your hand, on this day worshiping the Lamb, who is in our midst, in our presence, and declaring that you are worthy of being in his presence, you holy saints of God. It is you who come to this altar when the holy supper is prepared. The holy things for the holy people of God the meal prepared for saints that empowers and energizes you for holy living. That your life becomes more and more exemplary on the outside, even as it is already perfect in God's sight. That's what makes you a saint but also in your continual striving, following the example of the saints of old, of the saints among us this day, and that's every single one of you. As we hear this word and heed it, and by the grace of God, apply it in our lives. And one day, we will join those who are already there in fullness. We are here in their midst today. Wherever God is, so his saints are. That's all of them in heaven. And all who are gathered with him on earth. Whether that's two or three, eight, nine, twenty, two hundred, two thousand, or more. One day, we shall behold him and all the faithful face to face. And there begin the perfect life in body and in faith, living it forever with the God who has declared you to be worthy of his life. Worship him. Believe in him. Trust him, all you gods. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.